Well, hi again, everybody. Just want to welcome you back to another adventure here with the old goat. Today, we're going to try something new. We're going to head over to Fort Parker State Park here in Texas. And it's between Mahaya and Grosbeck. What I can tell is a really nice park. It's an old CCP park. Lots of history. Lots of things to see. Lots of things to do. We're going to enjoy it together. Hey, let's get this go rig packed up and let's head to Fort Parker. We're going to enter the park off of Highway 14. You'll see the large sign at the entrance of Park Road 28. The park is located between Mahaya to the north and Grosbeck to the south. It's here on the banks of the Navasota River where the original site of the Fort Parker Massacre occurred. And we're going to take a ride down the road a piece to check out the old Fort Parker where that unfortunate event occurred. It's not part of the state park but the unique history of Fort Parker seems to bring the past and the future together. We're going to see as much as we can on this trip, but you'll need to see much more on foot, bike, or maybe even kayak when you get here. There are many group sites at the park. For your next reunion or summer camp out, there are buildings that make up this barrack complex, and it has dining halls, game rooms, and even dorm rooms that sleep up to around 80 people. The city of Mahaya and three local landowners donated all the land creating this park back in 1935. And then the Civilian Conservation Corps built the roads and the recreational facilities, the concession building, you know, they've done a lot of work here and they've made such a beautiful place. And we're going to turn around down here by the old cemetery and we're going to go back up on the top side and visit the cemetery from the main entrance. Today the state park encompasses the historic town of Springfield, Texas. It was established way back in 1838, becoming the county seat in 1847. At its height, the town of Springfield had a population bigger than Dallas or even Houston. It began to die away in the early 1870s after the railroad decided to bypass the town and the courthouse burned. Rosebeck, just to the south, became the county seat in 1873 and the post office closed here in 1878, making Springfield virtually a ghost town. The only thing that still remains is the old cemetery, and it's full of history. It's the final resting place of many East Texas pioneers, including American Revolutionary War veterans and two veterans of the Battle of San Jacinto.
Okay, let's make a right right here, and we're going to head down toward the primitive camping area. There's many hiking and biking trails here. The park has three of those, Springfield Trail, the Navasota River Trail, and Baines Creek. The Burr Oak Trail is a nature trail that has an interpretive guide pamphlet that's available at the office. Now as we approach this area, we're going to make a left, and you'll notice that there are five primitive campsites here. They all have grills, and they're partially shaded, and they have paid parking. When you get just past this area, the Navasota River boat ramp is just on the other side. A 423 foot dam of limestone, concrete, and soil across the Navasota River created Lake Fort Parker. The park was dedicated by former Texas Governor Pat Neff, and it was opened back in 1941. We're now going to enter the sheltered cabin area. The cabins don't have beds or bathrooms, but they do have grills, electricity, water. They're scattered around the lake's edge, mostly near restrooms or showers. To the left here, we're going to make a quick stop and look down, and you can see the fishing pier. It's a really nice place to go down and catch a few fish. The trees in the park include burr oak, water oak, blackjack oak, pecan, eastern red cedar or juniper. Lots of other plants can be found. Fortunately, Texas has mild winters. It makes it a great place for the snowbirds. January averages lows around 34 degrees. Of course, July averages highs around 95. In August, we don't even want to talk about that. Of course, the wettest months are around May and September with low humidity year-round, pretty much. First freeze usually occurs late November, early December, last freeze around March. There's lots of wildlife in the park, like that little deer just run across in front of us. Make sure you keep your eyes open, that happens quite a bit out here. Lots of white tails to see, lots of ducks, geese. This place is really unbelievable. Wildlife you may see in the park includes bluebirds, ducks, herons, migratory waterfowl, bald eagles, owls, coyotes, raccoons, squirrels, bobcats, you name it. They're all here. There's an active great blue heron rookery on Fort Parker Lake. All you gotta do is look for it from the wildlife viewing area on the Burr Oak Nature Trail. In front of us is the group hall with kitchen, recreational hall. The group hall doesn't have its own restrooms. They were doing renovations at the time. The nearest restaurant is about 200 feet away. It does have AC, heat, water, electricity. They have microwave, refrigerator, stove, oven, all the accoutrement. It also has a large covered back porch with the lake view and with an open patio. Just ahead of us, as you can see, there's a pavilion. This covered pavilion is in the picnic area and it provides seating for 30 people you can bring lawn chairs and extra tables and seat another 30 there's water nearby electric restrooms and uh, six picnic tables it has an upright grill and what a beautiful view overlooking the lake Of course, there's plenty of fish, and that includes crappie, and bass, catfish, trout when it's in season, 
keep an eye out for aquatic wildlife on the lake or river, such as otters, beavers, nutri, they're all there. Also, the Fort Parker Nature Trail is open every weekend. They have the canoes and kayaks, paddle boats, and they're available for rental. Day use, overnight camping, root barracks and activity center, and picnic provision are all available for you. There's about 23 campsites, RV hookups, whatnot in this area. Rides along the lake shore. Plenty of garbage cans to uh, throw things in. Right up here on the right is your restrooms. And as you can see, they maintain this park very well. They were mowing the day we were there. Real peculiar tree right here on the right. Look at the size of the knot that's on that tree. It is huge. Very unusual. And there's your restrooms. There's a fish cleaning station there on the left where you can clean your fish. Just beside the pier. Not too far away. But there is so much to see and do here. This place is beautiful and the trees just cover everything and even in the warm days it's bearable even on those really hot days Now let's take a ride over to Old Fort Parker. Fort Parker was established just a few miles north of present-day Grosbeck by John Parker, his sons, Benjamin, Silas, and James, and other members of the Presbyterian Baptist Church of Crawford County, Illinois. Led by John and Daniel Parker, they came to Texas in 1833. Elder John Parker group settled near the headwaters of the Navasota River and built a fort for protection against Native Americans. Parker's 12 foot high long walls enclosed four acres. Bunk houses were placed on two corners for lookouts. And six cabins were attached to the inside walls. The fort had two entrances, a large double gate facing the south, and a small gate for easy access to the spring. Back in May of 1836, a large contingent of Comanches and Kiowa, Caddo Indians, and Wichita Raiders attacked Fort Parker. During the attack, they took Cynthia Ann Parker, then nine years old. She was captured and spent most of her life with the Comanche Nation. And later, she married 
Chief Nakona, and she gave birth to her son, Kwana Parker, who became a prominent leader of the Comanches. Cynthia's brother, John Richard Parker, was also captured and remained with the Comanches for six years, and after his release, he was unable to readapt to Western society and chose to stay with the Comanche Nation. Folks, I hope y'all enjoyed this little trip down memory lane and learning all about history of Fort Parker. And I hope you've enjoyed my video and you'll give me a thumbs up and a like. And hey, hopefully you'll join us here and you'll be here for the next one. Until then, everybody, I just want to say thank you very much for all your support. And uh, we'll catch you again. Until then, as the old goat saying, Great adventures to all of you.